Hello everybody, welcome back to we have another Strengths Materials video on the flexure formula. And uh, this is another basic video just hammering home uh, the basic principles of allowable stress that's developing in cross sections. And for this example, we have an unsymmetric cross section about the neutral axis. We're going to be talking about what uh, is going on in this type of problem. Uh, and the problem goes as follows. If the beam is made of a material having an allowable tensile and compressive stress of 125 MPa for a tensile, and 150 MPa for compressive, wants us to determine the allowable internal moment M that can be applied to the beam. So if you haven't seen the previous videos uh, on how to solve problems like this, or you wanna learn a bit more about the theory, you can take a look at the top here. But the main things that we need to do whenever we have a composite shape, first of all, is we need to go back to our understanding of the parallel axis theorem, where we are breaking down the components of the uh, shape that we have. So we have two rectangular shapes in this problem, for example, and we're figuring out what the cumulative moment of inertia is gonna be uh, based on the parallel axis theorem. And how that works is we first need to determine what this Y bar is, which is the location of the neutral axis, meaning the transition point between compressive stress and tensile stress in our section based on this positive moment, All right? So how do we do that? We need to first identify what the Y values are the local uh, the local axis for each of these shapes. So we have shape one and shape two here. If we write down y1 for this first shape, we know that it's going to be exactly half of the thickness. So we have 30 mil divided by two, which is going to give us 15 mil. And then similarly, we have y2, which is going from the uh, global x-axis. We have to take that 30 mil jump, and then we're taking half of this length of shape two, which is 300 mil. So we're gonna have three, or 30 mil plus half of the 300. And that leaves us with 180 millimeters. Now we need to determine what Y bar is and the simple formula for that is you're taking the sum of each of these shapes, uh, Y values times the area for each of those shapes all over the summation of area for the entire composite. So plugging in the numbers we have, we have Y1, which is 15 mil, which is solved for. And we have the area of that shape, which is 30 times 300. And that's going to be millimeter squared. And then similarly, we have to do the same for the second shape, where we have 180 mil and the same area, since the dimensions are exactly the same. And then obviously on the bottom, we're bringing down those areas too. And luckily the areas are exactly the same. So we can do two times 30 times 300. And then solving for that, you're gonna be left with a value of Y bar equal to 97.5 mil. And all that means is that from the X axis to the neutral axis is gonna be 97.5 millimeters. Our next step is to use the parallel axis theorem formula. And we have two rectangular shapes that are composing uh, our section. So the first shape on the bottom, we have to do the base uh, times the height, and that height's gonna be cubed, and it's gonna be to one over 12, just based on those basic formulas that we know already. So we have 300 for B, and we have 30 for the height. That's gonna be the power of three. Then we have to add this second part here, which is the area and the distance Y from the neutral axis to the local axis for that shape. So the area we know is 30 times 300. And we know that, that this distance here is gonna be Y bar minus Y1 from this drawing that we have here. So we have 97.5 and we're subtracting Y1, which is 15 mil. Squaring that and then moving on to the next shape. We have a very similar process here, except now the base is gonna be 30 and the height's gonna be 300. We have the area once again. And now we have the distance uh, between the neutral axis and Y2. So we have to take Y2 subtracting Y bar, which means that we're gonna have 180, which is what we saw for previously, and subtracting 97.5. Squaring that, we equal this uh, moment of inertia value to 190.7. 
times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. Now, the important part of this problem is we have two allowable uh, stresses for the compressive and the tensile fibers uh, of this member. So, if we know that the compressive is limited by 150 MPA, then we know that this is going to be for the top fiber based on our moment convention, right? So, we know that the C value that's going to be used in this formula is going to be from the normal axis to the furthest point on this fiber. So we're going to be taking this distance from here to here. Okay, so let's see what that looks like in the formula. We need to plug in that the max stress or the allowable stress in the compressive fiber or the compressive section of our member is going to be 150, and that's going to be in newtons per millimeter squared. We are solving for the moment, and we want to determine what the max moment is. So we're going to have to solve uh, for both the tensile and the compressive limits. So we have moment for the compressive side. And we need to determine what the C value is going to be. And that's simply going to be this entire height subtracting Y bar. So we have 330 subtracting 97.5. That's going to be millimeters. And then that's all over our inertia value, which we already solved for, which is 190.7 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4. Solving for the moment, you're going to be left with 123 times 10 to the 6. That's going to be in Newton's millimeter. But if we want it in uh, a more usable unit, then we can write it as 123 kilonewtons per meter. And then similarly, we can do the same for the tensile side, except now this distance is simply going to be y bar. So we have 125 is equal to m times 97.5. That's over the inertia value once again, times 10 to the 6. And solving for the m, we have 244.5 times 10 to the 6 in newton millimeters otherwise 244.5 in kilonewtons per meter since this value is lower this is going to be the max moment that can be applied to our section since this side is going to fail first based on the allowable stress given for the compressive side okay so that's that's it for the problem super simple super easy uh and i hope the explanation helped thanks for watching